Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for you all. In this video, we are going to be painting leather. Now, the kind of leather we're going to paint here is for the cloak on a model. And so for our example here, I'll be using Gorman DeWolf from War Machine, as he has this nice little cloak on his self that he's kind of Phantom of the Opera kind of thing going on. Now, the kind of leather we're going to paint here is a sort of rich kind of Almost like, you know, saddlebag kind of leather, if you know what I mean. <laughs> to get us started, we're going to use some XV88 with a little bit of medium. And this is sitting on top of a black primer, as we're just using uh, GW's uh, black spray primer. And as we lay the base coat down, again, we're trying to be mindful of how our brush strokes are running. So you can see as I'm initially laying out this first layer... I'm uh, going up and down with the uh, contours of the model. And as you can see, as we're working with the paint in a fairly thin consistency, we will have to put more than one layer down. Uh, for this model, I did put down three layers. And the paint was fairly thin, so the layers uh, you know, were fairly translucent. But to maintain a nice smooth finish, we alternate the brush strokes when we're putting in the base coat as you can see here this is the second layer i'm showing we didn't bother filming the third layer as i think we all kind of get the point on alternating our brush strokes i believe at this point <laughs> and so once the base coat was nice and flat and even on the model we take some agrax or shade now we're taking a fairly heavy load on the brush but we're not using it in the typical fashion here. Mainly I'm looking just to tint the overall feeling of the surface, but I wanna allow some of that shade to pool into the recesses. Here it got a little too heavy, but that's okay. Some deep recesses is fine. It's just often whenever you have a lot of wash kind of sitting in crevices, sometimes it does funny things if there's uh, impurities in your water or what have you sometimes you get this little frosting happening in the ink and it's a pain so often that's why i choose most of the time not to apply a very heavy wash and allow it to like reduce down because you get those little funny anomalies appearing in the surface and so that's it we allow that to dry and now we are going to come back in with some xv88 and we are going to dry brush this right on top of what we had previously done pretty much uh like 90 percent of the surface area all we're looking to do is just catch the raised edges but we want to re-establish that base color but we also want to keep the dark shadows we had created with the wash but we also want that tinted surface as well so already once we apply this re-establish this color we already have like three color transitions happening on the model and really it's up to you as how far you want to take the uh, highlighting process of the leather. If you want it to be a nice, rich, dark leather, then you know you can pretty much stop at any point, right? But here we're going to build it up fairly bright. Not too bright, but we'll see later on. I'm jumping ahead of myself here. Concentrating most of my brush strokes at the lower half of each of the little areas of leather allowing the darker areas to be up near the top and where the concentration of folds are. For our next highlight, we're going to go XV88 with some Usha T-Bone. We're going to mix this in roughly a 2 to 1. 2 uh, XV88 to 1 Usha T-Bone. And again, we're going to dry brush this next layer. And we're concentrating at the bottom ends of each of those little segments of leather that we're concentrating on. And with dry brushing, again, you're making sure that you have very minimal amount of paint on the brush. Like, it's almost non-existent on the brush. You keep a very light touch. And, of course, we're brushing against the grain of the folds so that we're catching those raised areas. And as you can see here, there's a little kind of like the shoulder area of the cloak and then the bottom half of his cloak. We're pretty much the same color. Now, you've seen that there is a trim on the model. Uh, we just overbrush that because you know we can always come back in and pick that detail later on for our next highlight again we're going to use xv88 new shop d bone in a one-to-one -one mixture this time and as you can see as we slowly build up these colors we're getting we're aiming for a smoother transition 
Now we could have gone with even smaller dry brush to really kind of concentrate this on, but I figured, well, it's over a broad area and we're just looking to just generalize the application. And again, this works for layering as well as uh, the question at the beginning was painting leather without the blending technique. And so I figure, well, we'll dry brush it because dry brushing is one of the more accessible techniques to achieving color transitions on a model. Next is Shabti Bone and XV88. And this time it's going to be in a one to two mix ratio. One XV to two Ushabti Bone. With a little bit of medium. Now with this final layer, we are gonna just layer in the color. So we're gonna grab our detail brush with a fairly heavy load of medium. And as you can see, we're just mixing it. So we're thinning it down uh, so that's a fairly light uh, consistency. And we're just catching the raised edges of some of the areas, concentrating more of the color at the bottom, but on some of the other areas, such as like at his elbow joint here, where he's kind of got like his arm bent inwards. We're catching some of those other areas up there just to reestablish those kind of highlights. And then here it's a very, very, very minimal amount of paint we're applying to these areas. And it's really just kind of a quick little line across and then one up near the main area of the fold where the main area of color is concentrated from our dry brushing and we're just looking to just create just a quick kind of bright highlight there and that's essentially it you see it's, it's a very subtle subtle highlight we're applying there and because the paint is fairly thin it, it when it dries it's uh, fairly translucent here I'm just quickly showing the hat just because I was painting it at the same time it's not important to this video but <laughs> figure we'll show it anyway you can see there and so now we have this fairly bright leather but when say we want to bring it back down and make it a little bit richer we're gonna use some seraphim sepia and we're not gonna apply this very heavily all we are looking to do is tint the overall surface of the leather area and I'm just gonna do the bottom half of the model just so we can show the contrast between the two and so you can see here I'm just as I'm laying in the sepia, you can see I'm not really letting it pool up or anything like that. I'm just drawing it up towards that uh, central fold in the model just in case that there is a little too much, then it can build up at that point. And this is just gonna build and keep the uh, leather uh, with a fairly warm appearance. We could also use Reichland Flesh Shade, but it has quite a bit of red in it and would kind of change the overall tone. And really we want this to have a nice dusky kind of leather kind of appearance almost like cowboy leather and so you can see here once the models dry you can see how it's a very subtle appearance between the two but that's it that's painting leather it's easy as that give it a try and thank you for watching the video hopefully you found it useful and informative for the next quick tip video leave a comment below or question as to what you'd like to see answered in the quick tip series. I do post these videos on a daily basis into Mini Wargaming's vault, as well as other painting tutorials, terrain tutorials. Click the link below to start your seven day trial of Mini Wargaming's vault, where you'll gain access to all sorts of videos, as well as quick tips, terrain and battle reports, and other random assorted funness. And so thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.